Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Lloyd Nolan in Dan Wickenden's The Wayfarers on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Newton. Gentlemen, this is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present Dan Wickenden's compelling novel, The Wayfarers, a story of American life which won a deserved popularity among the reading public. In the front of his book, Mr. Wickenden has a quotation from Walt Whitman, and as it happens to be one of my favorite Whitman quotations, I think I'll read it. Here it is. A man's success or failure in business and profession is not interesting compared to his success or failure as a human being. We doubt the value of success achieved at the expense of love or friendship. I think you'll admit that a novelist couldn't have a better inspiration for the theme of his story. We're happy tonight to have in the starring role that fine actor, Mr. Lloyd Nolan. And now a word about Hallmark Cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of Dan Wickenden's The Wayfarers. Hallmark is the name to remember when you want to remember your friends. For birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, holidays, there is a quality about Hallmark cards that whispers good taste, and you'll send them with pride, for that identifying Hallmark on the back adds meaning. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting The Wayfarers, starring Lloyd Nolan. afternoon was quiet, as Broadfield's afternoons had a way of being. At his desk, at Le Bryant, assistant editor of the Broadfield Chronicle. His efficiency at work was something in which he could take pleasure, but each day he walked away from his desk into a dream, a dream he had determined to forget, a dream of desolation and loneliness. Hey, Norris, you know Andy McBain's in town, don't you? He's set to lecture the women's aid. Yeah, they don't deserve it, I funny how two guys can start out at the same point with just about the same mental equipment, you'd say, and one of them winds up famous, and the other winds up a crummy assistant editor of a crummy paper in a crummy city, like myself. You roomed with him in college, didn't you? No. As a matter of fact, you once got him his job here on the paper. You started him. That's where I made my first mistake. Come on, let's forget Andy. Oh, Nora, boss's orders. You're interviewing the hotshot foreign correspondent this afternoon at his hotel. I am. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, uh, Andy's always been a headache to you. I tell you what, I'll go instead of you. No. No, thanks, Ag, anyway. I've been fencing with Andy McBain's shadow for too long. It's time I stopped running away. Who can tell? Maybe... Maybe this is some kind of a judgment day. <laughs> so fast. Why must I rush to see Andy McBain? He had me in the palm of his hand from the first day I met him. He always had his way. Yeah. Like the time I had a date with Laura backstage at the old Bijou Theater. He was with Betty Lynn. Let's see, that would be 22 years ago. Well, I suppose she's getting dressed. Now, look, Andy, Laura's sort of temperamental. You, you've got to remember that she's an actress. And be careful how you talk. You, will you, will you I'm not the least bit interested in your date. Why should I be? <laughs> I got Betty here. She's the home type. <laughs> kind of man respects kind men marry. Now, if you're trying to have fun at Betty's expense... Oh, Andy, nothing of the sort. I'm just trying to prove that you wouldn't know a woman was in love with you unless she told you. Now, wait a minute, Andy. How do you feel about Norris, Betty? Oh, now, cut it out, Andy. Betty and I have been friends since we were kids, and that's all. Yes, that's... That's, that's all. Oh, who are you two kidding? Why don't you talk up, Betty? Why don't you... Hey, who is that girl coming toward us? 
Is that... It's Laura. Now, please, Andy, handle the kit club. Oh, it's impossible. Oh, oh, what a knockout. How could she see anything in a shabby clodhopper like you? Get out of my way, will you? Oh, remember, Andy, Laura's my date. The wrong sense, wrong sense. It was your date. Hello, Norris. I'm sorry I kept you Oh, I didn't mind, Laura. This is... I'm Andrew McBain, dramatic editor of the Broadfield Chronicle. Oh, how do you do? And uh, this is... If uh... you'll come with me, Laura, I'd like to interview you. Oh, but you mustn't, Mr. McBain. The leading lady would scratch my eyes out. She hasn't been interviewed. I need my eyes badly. My living depends upon them. They are beautiful. This way, please. I'm afraid you don't understand. I have a date with... With me. Me. We'll begin the interview right now, huh? Tell me, when did you decide to take up acting as a career? Oh, hold on, Andy. The wrong type for you now, old boy. You're homespun. You and Betty belong together. Oh, Laura. Norris, I don't really want to go, but what can I do? I watched Andy and Laura go out of the theater. It seemed to me that she was really enjoying herself. After that, from time to time, I managed to run into Laura. I made it my business, too. I guess she thrilled me every time I looked at her. I felt that she knew, too. Well, at any rate, I finally managed to make a date with her to go on a picnic. I remember I was wearing my best suit that didn't fit very well and a high starch collar. No, I don't know, but you don't look especially good with your hair plastered down with stickum. Oh, you don't like it? Nope. I'm afraid you'll never acquire what the French call... You're more the Abraham Lincoln type, rugged and rough. Mm, I wish I could be as eloquent as he was. There's so much I could say. I'll bet you could if you loosened your tie and sort of opened that stiff collar and exhaled. (laughs) Thanks. I never did understand how Andy could wear those collars. Those collars were invented for his kind. Don't you like his kind? Oh, I like Andy fine. He's very dashing and gallant. Wouldn't be too difficult for a girl to become infatuated, would it? Are you? Would you care? Yes, he's in love with you. And Are I... you proposing for him? I... I hadn't any such intention. Oh, oh, good Lord, Norris. Don't look so noble. You frightened me. I wasn't thinking noble thoughts. What were you thinking? How much I wanted to kiss you. Don't you ever... Put your thoughts in direction. Oh, Norris. I love you, Laura. I guess I feel the same way about you. Why did you let Andy take me away that night? Why didn't you run after us and push him aside? I never prayed so hard for a man to be hit. I, I guess I'll never understand women as long as I live. You don't have to. Perhaps that's the wonderful part about you. You're like an open book. You mean what you say. You're you're never on stage. You're completely natural. You're not hemmed in by pettiness and sham. You're the kind... Well, what more can I say? But, Laura, you wouldn't marry me. Why should you? I have nothing to offer. You're a great actor. Oh, darling... I'm not. I can sing a little. I can remember lines. I can register the proper emotions in the appropriate spots, but that's all. You haven't even asked me to marry you. Will you, Laura? Six months later, we were married. The years passed, and Charlie and Patricia, our two children, were born. What happens to a dream? I was going to give Laura nothing less than the world. And instead, while my career stood still and my castles crumbled, Andy was riding high, not caring who or what he hurt. And that included me more than anyone else. The job I'd sought for years and had been promised... Andy received a syndicated column of a big New York paper. And Laura, my lovely Laura, became tired and discouraged. And doubts crowded in on me. I began to feel more and more that she was measuring my failure against Andy's success. And then one night at the country club at a welcome home party for Andy. Take 
keep that grouch off your face, Nora, and dance with me. No, I, I'm not in the mood, Betty. Why let him aggravate you? You've got to stop brooding and hating yourself inside. It's just no good. Come on up the veranda. No, please. What if you're against fresh air? Laura's out there with Andy. So? Well, they've been out there for quite a while. Now, you're imagining things that aren't happening. Do you think Andy could fool her with his glib talk? You seem to forget she made her choice years ago. Well, he wasn't important then. Laura's not that kind. Oh, no, there's no reason for you to always sell yourself short. She's in love with him. Hey, Nora, I've been looking all over for you. Hey, look, now I'm going to do something for you. Mind you, not because of you, but because... For, uh, for Laura, I suppose. That's right. Somebody's got to go to bat for you. It's time you stop pounding the pavement. When are you leaving for New York, Andy? Uh, on the midnight special, why? That's only two hours away. I don't know if I can stand you that long. What's happened to us, Laura? Why, why are we pulling in opposite directions? If you'll tell me what you want me to do, I... I, I don't know. I know there are things about me that you don't like. Oh, honey, come on. Let's get together. Look, I'll promise you I'll, I'll go to the barbershop more often and throw away all my old neckties. In a pinch, I'll even buy a new hat. You just name anything you want me to do. There's something I want to tell you, Noah. I just don't know how. Is it about Andy and you? No. It's about you and me. No, maybe I've done something to you. Maybe without realizing, I've tried to make over the qualities I loved in you. Maybe, basically, I'm the wrong woman for you. Don't say that. No, I don't want you hurt. Oh, maybe I'm tired and mixed up. I think I've gone a little blind. Perhaps if I went away for a little while... Away from this town. It's not the town, Laura. It's me. You were wrong about me right at the start. No, I wasn't. You were twice the man Andy was then. You still could be. Yet instead, you let your envy of him constantly drag you down. Can't you understand, darling? How, how much respect do you think I can have for myself when I can't even begin to give you the things a guy like Andy could? You still don't understand, women. I love you so much, Laura. I want you to have everything. Maybe I'm a complete fool. All I know is I have to leave here. I've got to look at all this from a distance. And don't worry. We'll work it out. You'll see. I won't be gone for long. <laughs> speeding train can mean many things. An adventure into the unknown for the pleasure traveler, a new account for a businessman, less miles between loved ones. For Laura, a speeding train meant a rendezvous with death. I was to blame. I had failed her. And yet all I did was to love her. Love shouldn't result in death. Love was the giver of life and a shield against destruction. But my love was not enough. moment, we'll return to the second act of The Wayfarers, starring Lloyd Nolan. Scholar and statesman, poet and protege of the king, this was Joseph Addison. And way back in the 18th century, it was Addison, one of the greatest of English essayists, who said, words, when well chosen, have so great a force. Today, too, as Addison found true so long ago, a word well chosen can be a great force in cementing friendships, softening grief, strengthening love. And no one appreciates the power of well-chosen words more than the makers of Hallmark cards. They are aware there is no magic like the magic of words to reach the hearts of others, to heighten their happiness, to comfort their sorrow. Whatever the occasion, there's a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. 
And what is true of the right words in a Hallmark card is equally true of everything else about it. It's artful design, it's superb craftsmanship. So make it a habit to look for that Hallmark on the back of every card you choose. For that Hallmark says you cared enough to send the very best. And now before we return to the second act of our play, I would like to tell you about a special broadcast. On June 1st, for the first time on the air, the dynamic story of Kansas City will be broadcast direct from Kansas City on the Hallmark Playhouse. One full hour of exciting drama. And our stars will be Jane Wyman and Robert Young. And now here is the second act of The Wayfarer, starring Lloyd Nolan. After Laura went out of my life, blackness moved in. All these past ten years seemed... nothing seemed to matter. My children, Charlie and Patricia, my friends, Betty, the world about me, nothing seemed to touch me. I've wrapped myself in a blanket of misery until the pain of living has become numb. Laura's gone, and it was my fault. And now, just as soon as I walk the length of this hotel corridor, I shall see Andy McBain and have him resurrect my failure to Laura and to my children. Dad? Huh? Oh, yeah, Charlie. How about going fishing with me? The lake's just loaded with trout. I'll get Pat to pack us a lunch. Well, Charlie, I, uh... Oh, look, why don't you go with one of your friends, huh? What? Oh, what's the use? I'm getting tired of asking you to do things together with me. To behave like a father. Quite a blues singer, Dad. Uh, come on, let's go into the living room to the piano and I'll show you how I sell a song. Oh, I can listen to it from here, Pat. Oh, but you've got to watch me. That's part of the selling. <laughs> what good would that do? What do I know about singing? You're really interested in my career, aren't you? Oh, all right. I'll go with you. Oh, don't bother. <laughs> You know, I want to talk to you. What is there to talk about, Betty? You, Charlie, and Pat. Oh, where are I? Are you? The kids are grown up and you don't even know them. And they don't care to know you. Just because you're not interested in surviving, is there any reason why your indifference should rub off on your children? You better face it. You know it as well as I do. Charlie is running around with the wrong kind of people. He's bound to get into trouble. And Pat is wasting a young life singing in a disreputable cafe. If you won't fight for yourself, fight for your children. Lord! <laughs> Come on in. Hello, Andy. Hey, don't tell me you're still pounding the pavement. Oh, just for the day. It's a pretty special occasion. Oh, it's great. Boy, great. Hey, tell me, what does a guy do here on a Sunday afternoon? I'm supposed to interview you. No, forget it. You can make up anything you like. No? Well, then I'll be late. Oh, no, no. Stick around. I, uh, I'm glad you're here, Nora. I feel like a human being again. I'm not the only friend you have around here. No, but you're the only guy in Broadfield I give a darn about. How's it going, Nora? Life treated you better than it has me? I don't know what you have to complain about. You don't, huh? How's the family? Oh, nothing much to tell. That was bad about Laura. I wrote your letter, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, she wrote a letter. I always envied you. Because she was your wife and not mine. You know, I honestly thought you didn't know her. Not the way I did, I mean. That's what the letter was about. <laughs> what gall I had. But I was a lot younger than I am now. Andy, I never did read that letter. I, oh? I tore it up, threw it away. I never opened it. Oh, it was just as well, probably. It was a bad letter. I, I was a little crazy, I think. You know, I tried to get Laura away from Maybe a guest. Maybe she told you. I'll never forget the way she looked at me. Not angry, a little puzzled at first. And sorry for me. How can you get along without her, Nora? How do you do it? I've asked myself that same question for years. Maybe, Andy, it's better to be like you. Nothing to worry about except your own skin. You're so wrong. 
You have her to remember and the children. I'd trade places with you any time. As far as I'm concerned, when the lecture tour is over and the book's dead, what then? Well, more of 40. No, 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 I'm too old. There's a whole new generation come along. I can't compete with them. Yeah, I'm going the way all newspaper hacks think they want to go, turning my hand to fiction. Maybe I'll make a living at it, maybe I won't. You know, if nobody buys my stuff, you'll have to find a place for me here on the Chronicle. You're... you're kidding. I wish I was. I'm pretty scared of the years ahead. I'm a frightened man, you know. A lonely one. That's... that's odd. And all along, I... I thought that you could never lose. That you were the big winner. Well, so long, Andy. Good luck to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for what? For giving me... For giving me back my self-respect. Everybody knows you left me. It's the talk of the town. How am I doing, Charlie? Great, great. Oh, you've never heard me on a microphone, have you? Oh, Charlie. Yeah, Pop. Charlie, you belong to some kind of a, a club, don't you? Why? What's the name of it? It's a social club. We shoot pool, go bowling sometimes. And hate most of the time. What do you mean? You can't get in if you're not 100% American. What's wrong with that? Solidarities, Irene. Solidarity. Solidarity against minorities. It's like hitting little kids, Charlie. Get out of it. Get out of it before it's too late. Well, I'm down off the soapbox, Pop. I don't like to be preached oh, at. Please don't shut your mind why up. Why the to... sudden interest in me? Ah, oh, Dad, why don't you leave him alone? Stop weeping on his shoulder. Weeping on his shoulder? That wasn't what I was doing. Look, Pat, all I want to do is help him. And I... I don't like the idea of your singing in a cheap dive. Leave us alone. That's what you've been doing for years. Pat, listen to me. Now, for ten years, I've been letting you both go to the devil in your own way. I know that was wrong, but is it so wrong to try to help before you? it's too late? Why do you have to go messing around with our lives? Why don't you just... You're my children. You're both part of me. I'm part of you. How can we leave each other alone? Oh, you're the last person I ever expected to hear that. Look, the wisest of us make mistakes. All I want to do is help you. Don't you ever want to help somebody else? Doesn't work out. Never works out. You have to let people go their own way. We learned that from you. Pat, Charlie, maybe I haven't got the right to ask you to forgive me, but I'm asking just the same. You know, you're both very young. I confess it's taken me a lot of years to learn that we are our brother's keeper. We make a bad job of it or try to pretend it isn't so, but we, we have to keep on trying. It's one of the things that life is about. We're alone. We'll always be alone in most ways, all of us. But there are bridges. There are a few little bridges that we can build. It isn't normal to want to stay alone. Oh, I no, I guess I'm talking nonsense, but I have to try. I have to try to do what I can for my children. I can't cut myself off from you. Please. No. What is there about you? You're different somehow. Well, could be. I'm wearing my face in a new way, Betty. Huh? <laughs> you know, maybe that's not as crazy as it sounds. You look... Well, you look happy. It's funny. While I was walking over here, I thought I'd never seen the sun so bright that... Seem to have an almost a, a benevolent kind of warmth. It made everything look so clear and sort of wonderful. Almost like I was seeing the countryside for the first time in ten years. This is a beautiful little town, Betty. Well, whatever the reason, no, it's good that you can see it again. Yes. Yeah. yeah, what is the old saying? There are none so blind as those who will not see. Oh, no, it's... I don't know why you put up with me for all these years, given me so much friendship without any thoughtfulness in return. I haven't deserved it, but I, I am grateful for Listen, it. Listen, Nora. Sometimes the right impulse will lead to disaster. And sometimes the mistaken one to an unexpected triumph. Who is to judge us? Betty. 
Betty, I, I feel as old as Methuselah. I could get along without you, I guess, but I, I can't see life that way anymore. So, I'm asking you to marry me. Oh. I've just reached the point where I can think about Laura as a chapter in my life that was wonderful. And the love I had for her has become part of me. But I, I suppose a man can have more than one kind of love in his lifetime. I'm, I'm saying it badly. I, I have so little to offer. You don't know. You just don't know what you have to offer. If you did, maybe I wouldn't love you, Nora. And I've loved you. Seems like forever. Oh, Nora. What about the kids? What's to become of them? We just can't. No, know. they've got good stuff in them. It'll come out. It's up to me. And now, up to you too, darling, to, to help show them the way. We're, go we're going to give them a happy environment and prove to them that we can work out our problems together. I know it isn't going to be easy, but we're going to fight. Betty, it's taken me a long time and a lot of misery to, to find out that everything that's alive stays alive by strife. That's what we're going to do, dear. That's what we're going to do. James Hilton will return in a moment. You know, almost every day I'm reminded of how much the sending of a greeting card can mean. Just today, a friend, known my special interest in greeting cards, showed me a Hallmark birthday card that it was plain to see it meant a great deal to him. I brought it along and would like to read it to you. Count not your age by years you live, but by the happiness you give, the friends you make, the good you do, the confidence that's placed in you. The little things that, day by day, bring cheer to others on life's way. And count this birthday one more mile upon the road of things worthwhile. <laughs> you know, I'd like to receive a card like that myself. It's typical of Hallmark cards. They have a way of always saying things that seem to be better than you could say it yourself. That's why, when you ask any group of friends what name they think of in greeting cards, when they want to send the very best, they quickly answer, Hallmark cards. So it's easy to remember, it would be difficult to forget. To look on the back of every card you choose for that identifying hallmark, it says you cared enough to spend the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Lloyd Nolan, for your fine performance tonight. Well, it's a privilege to appear in the Hallmark Playhouse, Mr. Hilton, and to be in such a fine play. You always seem to select such excellent stories. And uh, Frank Goss's mention of the special broadcast of June 1st seems particularly exciting. Well, it is exciting, Lloyd, both to us and to all of our listeners, because on June 1st, we're going to take the entire cast of Hallmark Playhouse to Kansas City for an hour-long broadcast of the dynamic story of Kansas City itself. We'll be broadcast direct from the Kansas City Music Hall. And uh, who will star in it, Mr. Hilton? We're very proud to announce that Jane Wyman and Robert Young will co-star on June 1st in the Kansas City story. Well, this promises to be one of the great shows of the season. Uh, and what have you selected for next week's show? Next Thursday evening, Hallmark Playhouse will present an entertaining story founded on fact entitled Knee Pants, written by Emil C. Schoemacher. Starring in one of the leading roles will be young Bobby Driscoll, who last year won two Academy Awards for his fine performances in motion pictures. So please be listening. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Day. Our music was conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at this same time when James Hilton returns to present Emil Schumacher's Knee Pants starring Bobby Driscoll. And be sure to listen in on June 1st when Hallmark Playhouse presents the dynamic story of Kansas City, broadcast directly from Kansas City. A full hour of thrilling drama starring Jane Wyman and Robert Young on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.